Naples. It's a bit difficult to speak about Naples because it's a very complex reality, so to say. One could start by talking about the history of the city. Well, uh, the very name of Naples means new city, Neapolis. So it means that there was an old city before Neapolis, right? And this old city was on an island in front of what is now Naples, where according to the legend, a, a siren, Parthenope, attracted people who navigated around that area and eventually they stopped there and founded the first settlement of the city, which then moved to the coast and took the name of Neapolis, the new city. So the history of Naples is already mythical in a way because it's linked to the siren. The name of the siren Parthenope means virgin. One could say that Na Naples is left with very little of what should be the virtue of a virgin in terms of its purity or it's uh, having kept its original traits. It's a city that has gone through many metamorphoses uh, during the centuries. So it has been the capital of a kingdom, the only kingdom in Italy that lasted independently for 1,200 years, more or less. It has been one of the main cities of uh, Italian art, Italian music, the opera. It is also the, the, the food capital of Italy because all the Italian food that is known outside of Italy, spaghetti with tomato sauce, pizza, is in fact Neapolitan food, is not uh, Italian food. And it, is also, it has also been a, a center of literature, not just in Italian, but in its own dialect, in, in Neapolitan, which is considered one of the literary languages of Italy besides Italian. But all these things, I think, leave us just with a sort of external understanding of Naples. This is just a collection of data about the city, but the city is much more. I like to think of Naples as a sort of living organism. And like any living organism, it has its bowels, it has its heart, it has its parts that are less noble, its parts that are more noble. The mafia, that the way we experience it outside of Italy, is a Sicilian phenomenon. In Naples you have the Camorra, which is as ancient as mafia. When did Naples become the capital of Camorra? That's a question that usually is avoided in Italy because it brings up some unpleasant truth that displeases what should be the national patriotism. Namely, it brings up the truth that the Camorra is partially a fruit of the unification of Italy. So the Camorra is one of the remaining plagues of the, the problems that Naples ran into after the unification. In short, what happened is that when Garibaldi and, and then the Piedmontese came down and conquered the, the kingdom of Naples, the kingdom of the two Sicilies, uh, how it was called, in order for them to conquer this kingdom, they had to find help in the local malavita, in the local criminality. So in Naples in particular, people were kept in the, in the royal prisons. They freed them up. And these people then, in turn, collaborated in the establishment of the power of the invader. So, if Naples now is the capital of the Mafia, or the Camorra, it has to do with long sedimented problems. And then the fact that the Italian state has, has run through clientelism for 150 years on also organized crime. If you compare it to other Italian and European cities that in the past 70 or 80 years have gotten really gentrified, Naples has not gone to any process of gentrification. Uh, its city center is still inhabited by the same low-class people that inhabited it for millennia. You can still find people frying pizza under a baroque palace in the same little shop where their forefathers had been frying pizza for the past 150 years or so. So there is a vitality in Naples that you don't find in Rome, you don't find in Florence, you don't find in Paris. A vitality that comes from the law classes, so to say, from this living together of uh, cultivated people, less cultivated people, and people who can barely speak Italian uh, or any other language but uh, Neapolitan. And this gives the city a particular flavor. Then, of course, this comes also with many problems, at least for the standards of the modern world. The city is in disarray, the city is dirty, uh, the city is uh, also full of criminality. Um, but, to me, all this smells like life. 
and not like a museum as Florence or Venice or Paris oftentimes appear to be. I think it has to do with the fact that in Naples more than in other cities in Europe you had from the 1700s or the 1600s the actual living together of the nobility and the law classes in the same palaces. So a noble family would build a huge palace in the center of the city, usually with a beautiful baroque facade in order to, to illustrate the glory of the family. And then they would rent all the down spaces to law people, either for living in there or to use them as shops. And ever since this structure has not changed, it's still there. Why it hasn't changed, I exactly don't know. It might have to do with something that a, an Italian historian of art refers to as the refusal of Naples and of Florence, as far as Italy is concerned, to even bother about learning anything about modernity. They just don't care. So they, they think they've reached a perfect state and they don't want to change. That's, uh, that's what could be, maybe, one reason. Maybe a historian would say that the reason is the fact that Naples lost its primacy as capital after unification and it became a peripheral city, even though it's the biggest city in Italy. And so uh, all the process of modernization that has taken place in Rome and Milan has not taken place in, in Naples. I think it's probably a combination of the two things. A refusal from the part of the Neapolitans to take part into modernization, maybe the idea as Tommaso di Lampedusa, uh, an Italian writer, says the idea that southern Italians are already gods. Nobody can teach us anything. So whoever comes thinking to bring us new ideas won't be welcome because we know it all already. And if we stay in the state in which we are, it's because we've chosen it. So that's part of the motivation. Maybe the fact that, you know, Naples was abandoned as uh, capital and hence lost its centrality. Probably is a combination of the two things. As I told you, it starts from an island originally, which is here. Then this island is in front of a small gulf, which is closed on the one end by Posillipo, which is a cape, basically. And on the other hand, by Positano, at the other end of the cape. And uh, in front of Positano, there is then the mount, the, 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 the volcano Vesuvio. So the city spreads through this arch, if if you will. So it's one of its directions is from north to south. The other main direction is from east to west because surrounded as it is by mountains, there is a castle on one of these mountains and down from this castle, a huge, a long way runs, a long street runs, which is called, the, the Neapolitans call it Spacca Napoli, means break Naples because it cuts the city in exactly two parts. And this is the heart of the, of the city as it was built, as it was developed in the 1600s by the Spanish uh, viceroys. So it is a city that lives on the sea. Uh, it is in continuous, in a sort of love relationship with the sea. Uh, I was telling you before that Naples is famous, famous also for music. And in fact, this relation of Naples with the sea is mirrored in the Neapolitan songs. Neapolitan music uh, is different from all the rest of Italian music in that it is sung in Neapolitan and it has a particular way of arranging the tunes. Uh, and in these songs you find always talks about love, but it's love that happens in front of the sea. So the sea is omnipresent in Naples. Every reference uh, has to pass through the sea uh, one way or the other.